It's cold, guys. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. Sound right, boy. Hey guys, and welcome to a new video. So today, what we're going to do is, I'm going to get a U bike, and we're going to take a ride uh, from where I currently live. And we're going to see how far we can go along the bike track. Sit back, enjoy, and let's see where we end up. I just kind of got through the little bit of traffic that I had to get to get to the river path. Uh, which is just in front of me now and gonna put the camera on the bike and let's get going but before we do that a few things i just want to talk about about your bike so your bike is pretty cool in the sense that it's a, it's a rent a bike scheme um, there are places throughout the island so um, you can just go up to any of the stations all the bikes are parked at stations you take your metro card Tap it against the um, against like the panel next to the bike. It unlocks the bike. Thing. So what's really cool about the U-Bike is that because it's so ubiquitous in Taiwan, number one, nobody really tries to mess with it, nobody looks at it. It's just really something that everybody knows about. Everybody knows what it is. Number two, really easy to find a stop. Number three, it does actually have gears. It looks like a single speed, but it's got three gears. Those are the three cool things about the U-Bike. A couple of years ago, a company called O-Bike tried to start in Taiwan, but it was an absolute failure. They tried the U-Bike model, but without the stations. Using a phone, you could lock or unlock the bicycle anywhere within a certain radius of a city. However, what ended up happening was the bikes were just being abandoned halfway up mountains as people were trying to cycle up, got tired, gave up, locked the bicycle up there, and found an alternative way down, probably with Uber. Obike never really cleaned up these bicycles and you can actually still see some of them being littered around Taipei. They're really disgusting and they are big eyesore and I really think that the company should be doing something about it. The really nice thing about the bike path that I'm on is that it actually goes through a number of parks throughout its route. There's also another bike path on the other side of the river that you can get on as well. And there are multiple bridges that cross the river. So both of them have their own parks. And it's really nice because it's away from the cars, it's nice and quiet. There's people playing sports in the background. And it's a really nice place to get some fresh air, get out of the hustle and bustle of the city, whilst not being too far. As it gets 
stop, it's still safe to ride your new bike. The new bike's got a dynamo on the front and on the back wheel, so you've got a light on either side that will light up as you ride. However, the new bike does not come with an included helmet. This is okay as in Taiwan, on the side parts you are not required to wear a helmet, and you very seldom see a new bike on the road as the roads are off right congested and it's easier to ride on the sidewalk where there are cycle lanes as well. Got into the end of where I was going. Um, I actually missed my the, the exit from that river area that I was planning on going out on, and ended up in this in an area I didn't know. Um, so I don't know if you really saw the GoPro, but we actually ended up going right down the end of the runway um, for Songshan International Airport, which was actually pretty cool. The one thing about Taiwan is that it is very safe. So even though I was lost. Um, at no point did I feel threatened. So that's it for my side. I just want to say thank you so much for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe. And yeah, well, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.